In this video, I'm going to provide you with an example of what a 1950s style hip roof framing would look like with an 8 and 12 pitch, 2x6 ceiling joists, 2x6 roof rafters, each space 24 inches on center except for the garage collar tie, garage rafter ties, I'm sorry, will be 2x6 spaced 4 foot on center. Give you a look at the floor plan. And again, this is another video from our L-shaped floor plan series. I'll put a link to it at the back of the video. I'm trying to make a video series about different types of framing and some remodeling you can do to this particular house. Ceiling joists, uh, 24 inches on center again, lapping over the bearing walls and the beam. And of course, here you can see where they come and they lap. Now, since it's, unless you were going to change the roof rafters, you will need some type of a block every four foot on center to create some type of a rafter tie between the walls. And if you need more information about rafter ties, uh, maybe I'll put a link in there for you. That's what it would look like with the valley rafter coming in. A lot of times you would just uh, attach the ceiling joists to the valley if uh, it was going to be in the way and of course you would notch all of your um, drywall backing around the rafters the hips and the valleys also four foot on center rafter ties another view of it there lapping and of course here we're not going to need the blocks because we're going to have a wall so they'll have there'll be a firewall separating the garage from the home don't forget that uh, if we're using two by six rafters and two by six ceiling joists that there will be some type of a notch usually at the end to keep prevent these uh, corners from sticking up above the roof sheathing another example of the flat ceiling backing and of course the beam, supporting beam. And another view of the supporting beam. Like I said, this was real common to have something like this um, separating and maybe the living room, the dining room. That is almost all I can think of. It was such a normal, normal way to build things. This is basically the same kind of design on the home that I'm living in right now, except the ceiling's vaulted. Here's a view with the roof on. See how this is a nice flat surface. Not too bad we can't do this with uh, out in the field all the time. Another view of it there. The hip jack rafters. Blocking the notch I was talking about. If this wasn't notched, it'd be sticking up above the finished roof or putting a little, uh, putting a little uh, bow in the plywood there. And the view of the fill or jack rafters. The jack rafters usually are cut to line up. Um, but like I was saying, if you don't want to put the block in, then you could move these rafters over. And that could create a problem for other parts of the framing. But this is where you just got to put a little more thought into the entire process of construction. So here we have it. This one here laps. If this ran all the way through, we wouldn't need this block. But most of the time we got to lap the joists because we don't have 30 foot lumber um, all the time. And uh, that could be a problem. And again, 30 foot lumber could be a problem just handling it on a job. So the block would be necessary unless you took all of these rafters and shifted it over an inch and a half. Then everything would work out. Your collar ties uh, might need to be a little uh, might be a little strange uh, or angled but uh, wouldn't be the first time we ran into that valley hip hips and valleys are usually the same length of lumber by the way for those of you who just uh, assemble truss roofs all the time you wouldn't uh, need to know that but the conventional framing the hips and the valleys are usually the same length might need to be cut a little different but uh, same size give you a view of the 
boards holding up the, I should say holding up, they're, they're kind of holding up the rafter ties. I know a lot of people think that the rafter ties are in these uh, vertical braces are holding up the roof and that's not the case, that's the opposite. These boards are supporting the rafter ties and kind of just preventing them from moving up and down. A view of the firewall. I took out the two rafters so you can get a better view of it. This firewall, of course, would be plastered a drywall with a fire retardant material, a Type X drywall, 5 8 that uh, gives it a one hour burn through for anything that uh, caught fire in the garage. Hopefully, it never happens. View of the valley and how this hip dies into the valley and the ridge and I ran the ridge past here this isn't something most people would do but I like it um, if you run the ridge just when you're framing this run the ridge past a little bit if you if you haven't framed this part yet if you frame this part yet you'd be able to figure it out easier but if you haven't then just run the ridge past a little bit and then when you go to put this rafter in cut the ridge nail it to it and you get gives you another nice connection Another view of the hip here with the fill rafter. And then, of course, you're, it was real common to have some type of a vertical support um, for the ridges where you could put them in. And, of course, this right here would be the perfect spot for it. I mean, the wall's almost in the perfect spot. But you wouldn't be able to put this in. You would have had to have angled it if this didn't come over a little bit also. So, again, more stuff you would need to think about while you are building. Okay, the another vertical brace. I'm going to go ahead and try and speed it up here. looks like my time's running. I don't like to make videos too long, but uh, for those who have seen my videos, hey, that's just the way it is, huh? Another brace. And then the braces here for the ridge and then the purlin. This does this cannot be um, less than a 45 degree angle. I mean, more than a 45 degree angle. It can be less than. This is about a 40, 43 degree angle, so it can go farther this way. It could go up like this, but it couldn't go, um, let's say, a 50-degree angle wouldn't be providing much support, if any. Another view of the purlins, how they are attached. And a lot of times it's like, hey, wait, it has to be attached to a bearing wall. Um, I think really what you're doing in a situation like this is just trying to brace it and make it work. You know, Non-bearing walls uh, could create a problem if they don't have any support underneath them for the ridge, also, for these rafters also. Let's just go back for a second. The You can see where the weight would transfer down. Well, you would actually could actually have enough weight on these walls to create the floor, a sag in the floor. And then a lot of people will go in and they will, hey, let's fix the roof without without checking the floor out first. And this would be subfloor framing more than concrete, solid concrete foundations. But they'll go in and they will fix the part of the roof. Um, they'll, you know, shore this up and put more weight on the ceiling joists and all this, but they never fix the floor. So keep that in mind when you're doing roof repairs. The collar ties. Uh, view at the top view there. And that is it for the video. So hope it wasn't too long, but I uh, had to get whatever I had to get in there. And uh, if you like the video, don't forget to hit the old thumbs up button.